so it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, it wasn't long um, after our last talk that I had to sit down. Um, it initially just felt like I was um, maybe a little bit drunk. Nothing nothing to really be concerned about. Um, but then I started you know, getting this really, really bad headache, and I wasn't tired at all. If anything, um, I seemed like something was keeping me awake. So I started thinking, well, maybe it's a combination of the, you know, I, I had four beers over what, uh, five hours, six, six hours. Four beers over six hours is not a lot to, um, in fact, I think I could probably drive on that, um, legally speaking anyways, um, although I probably wouldn't, and I would not advise it, but I mean, it, it, it's not a lot, um, it's not a lot to be, uh, concerned about, and it's not really a reason, um, to feel bad when you get home, um, but I mean, that was kind of what it felt like initially, but then the headache came in, and the fact that I was like wide awake hit me, so, um, I started thinking, well, maybe it was kind of a combination of, um, you know, withdrawal, um, on cigarettes, um, I had three cigarettes, um, it, it, you know, and I'm thinking maybe it was more like the effect of it than anything else. But I, I wasn't feeling like, like I didn't have an urge to go buy a pack of cigarettes at all. Like, like remotely, right? So that kind of struck me as, as as wrong, too. Although, you know, maybe it had something to do with it. Um, you know, and, and then the large amount of awakeness had me thinking about maybe the coffee... Um, on top of that, it was the weather, um, I went from being outside to being inside, and it is dry in here, you can, I, I noticed that quite clearly when I came back in, um, because it's moist outside, um, it's a, you know, it's a little bit above freezing, um, or, or very close to it anyways, um, so it's wet outside, but it's, you know, um, drying here, so, you know, the difference in that, um, about well, the fact that the weather was going haywire, and, um, it kind of felt like a normal weather feeling with everything else, um, whatever it was, um, it kept me awake until 8, well, sorry, actually, it kept me awake until 11 o'clock in the morning, um, I may have, you know, dozed off for an hour here or there, but, um, I actually kind of felt like I was stuck in, like, a time warp. Um, because I, I wasn't sleeping, but, like, I was feeling like I was going to collapse, and it was bad kind of thing. So, um, the other possibility that kind of s snuck up on me was that maybe I smoked something last night that I didn't mean to smoke. Um, and the handful of times that's happened in my life um, about what happened last night has been the result of it. Um, an inability to sleep combined with um, nasty headaches. Which really always makes me wonder why people do this stuff. Um, it didn't feel so good, to be honest with you, at all. Um, and it never does. So, you know, like, what, what are people getting out of this? Um, it really kind of stresses home the importance of, of personal um, supply management. But I'm, I'm not even really convinced that that's what it was either. Um, anymore. It's about 3.30, um, and I'm just getting up. Although I'd like to sleep a little bit longer, um, today is that I, I have to go to the store. 
um, and, and, and do some things. Um, I would have liked to do it yesterday even, but um, I, I must do it today. Um, I got up. In the mirror, I noticed that something really nasty on the side of my face. Now, that wasn't there last night. I can be sure of that. In fact, I can be sure it wasn't there when I went to bed. Um, I, I have footage of myself on camera, and um, I didn't see it. So, like, it wasn't there. Um, what the hell is that? I don't know. Um, it kind of almost looks like a bite. Is the way that it's um, uh, spun around. Um, but either way, um, it looks like um, something was released. Um, meaning, I'm looking at it's a possibility that I may have actually had some clotting issues, um, and the headache may have been the consequence, like like really seriously, um, or um, I had an ingrown around that area, and um, something may have been let loose. Um, I've noticed this before um, when playing with ingrowns. Um, there's something toxic in in, in, the, in the pore. Um, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's really acidic and it'll eat through your skin. Um, I had a really bad one um, right about here. And it like just fried the whole side of my face off. Like I barely even touched it. And, but, but just letting loose that... Um, t touching it the wrong way you know, like, 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 release some kind of, like, sack of fluid, um, and it was just, like, pus on my face for, for days, um, and I think that might, well, that's what might have happened there. I know that the ingrown that was there was pretty bad, um, and that something like that was going to happen, um, eventually, um, when, um, when it came to actually pulling it out, um, it was under the skin, um, I can't even see it anymore because it, there's so much irritation. Um, but, um, so I mean, I don't even know if it's still there. Um, it might have fallen out, and that might actually be what, um, <laughs> what, what, what is going on there. Um, um, but it, but I, I, like, I don't, there's no blood on my pillow. Um, the kidney really can't be so, so bad. What is on the floor there? I'm freaking out because I don't know what that is. Can you see what that is? I've got my keys in my pocket. I don't think that should be there, whatever that is. That's oh, a couple of dollars, I think. Yeah. Okay. That is a wad of... Oh. Okay. It's a wad of one dollar bills. Um... I believe there's fifteen dollars um, there, and that, that big stack of um, cash. Anyways, um, see that was kind of creepy, but um, see it's weird because it's kind of um, double-edged because my like I feel kind of a little less uh, tense, so I don't know. It's, it, it, it's all very strange, um, but um, I do think that. The sudden um, headache that I had—it um, ha it was related to whatever the fuck is wrong with my face—and um, we'll figure out um, in the next couple of days whether um, some kind of um, 
w w whether that's irritation from, from my hair that is so far gone <laughs> that um, that's the result of it, or um, whether I may have gotten bit by something. Um, that's really the only two possibilities. Um, like I said, it wasn't there when I left. It wasn't there when I came home, when I went to sleep. It developed overnight. So, um, I don't, I, it's, I, I'm not, I'm not faulting myself for fucking with my face like that. I don't, I didn't create that. Um, although I do know that there was an anger in there. So, I mean, if, if that, if that came out, that came out from, that, that's my body expelling it. Um, or it's, uh, it, it, see, it looks like a bite, but it might, like, in a real sense, um, I, if a hair is really, 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 like, I, I think it's going to be, like, that long. Like, I'm not joking. Like, like, this is a, um, it's actually the same one that, remember when I had a huge gash? I didn't actually get all of it out. And that, you know, it was, like, like that, you know? Um, and it's the same one. So, except, except like, last time, like, my face was like that because, like, I went, actually went in there and I ripped it apart. This is spontaneous. Right, so, um, it's, and, and it's still under the skin. It healed under the skin. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's nasty. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad situation. Um, and, and I think that might have been why um, I, I felt like I was going to explode. Um, so, but like I say, the, the, the strange part is that, is, is that, like, now I feel like, I feel looser, you know, so, I mean, and I have noticed this before, about pulling um, certain specific uh, ingrowns out of specific areas, is that it seems to have some kind of effect on the blood flow, um, as, as bizarre as that is, um, but I mean, this is, this, this had to come out, um, if it, if it wants to spontaneously throw itself out in a way that looks like I got bit by a scorpion, um, that's maybe not my first choice, but what's going to happen is going to happen. Um, and I think that that's why I, uh, I didn't get anything done yesterday. I sat down trying to watch the vlog that I outputted the day before. Um, and I just, like my head just wanted to, you know, like I, I felt like I was on a vice grip, but, 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 but at the same time it was, it, it was, I mean, like, that's what I felt like it was like, it was like a tension issue, which is, I mean, if that's, it, it's strangely consistent with itself. Um, even if I recognize that I'm kind of just making stuff up, um, I, I, I will um, uh, point out that, that it kind of fits together properly. Um, and, and I'm able to make a broader narrative out of it. I guess I need to get to the store. I need to buy some pills. Um, I need to get some bagels and some, and some fruit and, and these kinds of things. So... Um, I'm out of here. Be back in a few hours. Yeah, looking at my face, I, I'm back now. Um, I didn't have any bagels. This is not the first time this has happened. Um, this means I gotta go back a few days later and get some. Oh, there's no. <laughs> I I'm good until Friday. So um, and, and I didn't get any bananas because of that, or any pineapple because of that. Although I might need to take a walk to get some pineapple. Um, really, actually, I was surprised that they had some strawberries there on uh, at a decent price. So um, that at least is good um, for backup um, for the rest of the month. Um, but the, the more I look at my face, the more I'm convinced that um, like it looks like something burst, like a blood vessel like exploded sort of thing. Um, and in fact, I can smell the blood. Um, it has that sort of like coppery kind of smell. Um, so what I'm thinking that must have happened is that the hair must have been like acting like it's like a suture. It must have been like holding part of the face together. Um, and it might be partly because like it might have healed wrong from the last time or something like that. But either way, um, it looks like there was like too much tension there, and um, just by kind of jiggling the hair a little bit, um, I must have like like blown something open. Um, 
And I may have like melted some skin with some of that, like I say, some of that like acidic stuff that comes out. Um, there's actually like there's there's this this is well understood actually. There's a scientific name for it if you look it up. Um, it's the um, it's connected with acne. Um, so it, it's the same basic um, chemical process um, that underlies like uh, the um, bruising and, and skin brokenness that's associated with acne. Um, so, you know, if you ever notice that anger on hair looks kind of like a pimple, basically it is um, the same thing. Um, so, um, I mean, I, I think that has something to do with it, but, I mean, it, it, the fact that my jaw feels so much more open as strange as, as an idea as that is, but it does. Um, it seems like something like like kind of snapped open, and that's actually what the um, the the, uh, the the broken kind of like I say, it looks like an insect bite because it looks like it like a it looks like something to call bite, you know? It's like the, it's got that like rounded kind of kind of look. Um, but I think it's just more like something snapped open, um, which is, um, kind of creepy when you think about it, but, I mean, if the hair had grown a specific way, it could have, you know, held all the skin together a little too tight, and, and snapping it could have broken that back open um, to a, a more natural space. Um, and I'm starting to wonder if that might be ultimately... Um, the source of these weird um, ticks in my face, um, you know, if it, not just that one, but maybe other um, nasty inroads in, in the inside of my chin. Um, I can't tell if it's still there or not because it's just it's it's underneath a big pile of scabs and shit. Um, I'll have to figure out. Um, I'm gonna have to wash it probably after I eat. Um, and I'll see what I can get out of there, or see, see, see if I can see anything in there. Um, but um, I, it looks to me like it's probably just gone. Um, or if it's not gone, it's hanging somewhere. Because um, I really like, like legitimately feel like a total difference in my face. So um, I'll have to see. Um, but... Um, I, I suspect it might just have evaporated. <laughs> so the Caspian report um, sequence is done. Um, I, I, I don't have a lot from Chomsky um, in this list. Um, this is in fact the only video. Um, it's uh, uh, it's actually largely because I've already watched all <laughs> most of the Chomsky videos um, on YouTube, or at least the ones that are of uh, length. Um, every time I run across one, I've already watched it, so I don't know, maybe there's some, you know, repository that I haven't seen, but um, you know, and there's always new stuff coming up, but um, uh, when, when I when I made this list, everything that I came across, I'd already seen, so um, this is uh, just a pastiche of um, uh, ideas about, about anarchism. Um, and he does something weird here. He kind of um, they, they they ask him a question about, or, or some some radio guy asks him a question about um, uh, participation in society, and he started talking about the um, division of labor, but then went back to participation again um, in a way that was like it kind of made it look like he was rejecting the division of labor, which is something that drives me crazy. Um, rejecting the division of labor is just, I mean, there's a lot of ideas, um, that, that I, I mean, the arguments, um, have some validity to it. Um, I mean, this idea that, um, you know, if, if you have a strict division of labor, um, and I think the, the key part there is strict, um, then you, you you reduce people into slaves. I mean, it doesn't matter how free the system is. Um, if you are 
um, if, if it's determined that you are in this role, and it doesn't really matter what the role is, whether it's you know you're sweeping the floors or or, or you're you're running the company, if you're stuck in that in that role, then you're not free. Um, and and the whole um, uh, foundation of of, of 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 the system being one of freedom um, completely collapses, right? So there has to be um, a lot of um, space for uh, things to be shared and uh, you know people move around and all that kind of thing, right? Um, the reality is that I mean the current system that, that that's like I I wouldn't criticize the current system uh, um, in terms of the way that it um, approaches division of labor. Um, I don't think we have a really strict division of labor in society. Um, I think that um, if anything, the education system is a little bit lax. Our standards are too low. Um, and, and if we're to approach this at all, we need we should you know the first thing we should do is is, is increase our standards in the education system. Um, to ensure that um, you know you're not you're not getting through unless you really understand the stuff, and more importantly, from my experience, is that you're not teaching um, uh, unless you have a have a strong grasp, and that 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 um, applies at that at the teaching assistant level as well. Um, so that was my biggest problem going through school. Um, it was rare that I came across a bad prof. In fact, I. I'm not sure I could even name one, um, but the TAs, like bad TAs, is an endemic problem. Okay, they're everywhere. Yeah, every program, every course. Um, I'll admit I only went to one school, so maybe it was just a problem at the school that I went to. But bad TAs, it's like this huge problem um, because the whole TA system is based on nepotism. I know you, you know, it's it's the prof's uh, nephew that gets the job, or the, uh, you know, someone's. So someone's girlfriend, you, you know, th th that's the reality of how it's set up because nobody really takes the position seriously, right? Without this sort of recognition that, wait a second, um, the TAs are actually doing all the work um, and it's the TAs that make the difference um, as to whether an idea um, is understood or not. And if you put a bunch of doofuses in those roles, um, then, then nothing gets... You know, you you end up with stupid people failing smart people, okay? And and that's the problem that I saw over and over again. Um, and really is the major reason why I'm why I gave up. Um, I I, I said, told myself I don't want anything to do with this system because it's too um it's too corrupt. Uh, the nepotism is is too powerful. But I'm I, I'm I've digressed. Um, I was talking about the division of labor and. Um, he, he, he ended up taking a reasonable position on it, um, which is sort of the rejection of the strict division of labor. So, you know, uh, certain people need to be surgeons and, you know, surgeons should go to school for a long time. Not everybody can be a surgeon, um, but, um, you know, things that nobody wants to do, like cleaning toilets, well, we should all take turns on that. Um, you know, but it, this has always struck me as an inconsistency itself. Um, you know, and it's part of the... Um, I mean, it, it's often presented as the problem, why this system can't work, because nobody will do the things nobody wants to do. Um, you know, and then the general response is, well, we need a shift in consciousness. Um, and then the reaction to that is, well, it's it's in our human nature, we can't do it. And the reaction to that is, well, maybe you're right and maybe you're wrong, but whatever human nature is, it's not fixed. So um, even if our nature is as you say it is, then we can change it, and then they say you can't change it, and then it's just... Yes, you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Right. So, so it just comes down to, you know, is if human nature exists at all, is it malleable or is it? Um, I, I, it doesn't really matter if human nature exists. Um, if it if it does, then the question is, is it malleable? And if it doesn't, well, then we can. Then then it it is malleable. I mean, it. So something has to exist that is that is describable by calling it nature and assigning it to humans, right? So, I mean, like, like, there has to be some kind of something there, right? But it may be so fluid that it's not worth even labeling it, right? Um, but, 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 I mean, see, see, this question isn't normally um, framed in terms of putting um, the division of labor together with the participation in society. Um, and it was that 
connecting things together, they kind of made me think of something else. Um, the claim is that um, a participatory society requires participation, by definition, right? Um, but then we have this issue about division of labor that's, you know, reasonably brought up um, all the time. Maybe the way around that would be to tell people that they can be janitors and, you know, other... Let's stick with janitors, because I think that's the only thing that we can be really certain of must exist. Although robots could do it, um, too. But, but, but let's say that we can do this. We can say, you can do this grudge labor that nobody wants to do, supposedly, in exchange for not participating. So we will say that you don't have to participate if you do this labor instead. Okay, now, and not, that's not just a Bugs Bunny tactic, although it no doubt will come off as one, and no doubt would be a great Bugs Bunny skit. Um, but 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 it is perhaps the right mindset um, for specific people. Um, I've met lots of people that don't want to participate. Um, they might not really want to um, sweep the floors either. But if you made them make that choice, they may choose the latter. Um, now, that, that, that instantly, I mean, the claim is it instantly creates a class-based system. Um, but, 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 but perhaps it's doing so on a level that's... Um, less coercive, right? Because if you're coercing people to participate, I mean, it, it's the major pro. It's, I mean, we can't even get, well, you say you can't get people to vote, and the response is, well, look what the options are, and hey, you know. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, if people were more um, engaged, perhaps we'd have better options, right? So, um, Whatever factors um, we want to talk about, whether it's coming down from the top or being pushed up from the bottom, it does seem to be that there's a fundamental problem um, with people having a lack of desire to engage with things around them. Um, and I know it's really hard for you know uh, smart people to kind of get their head around that, um, but at the same time, at the same time, it's not. Um, I know I exist in a kind of a space where, um, well, I mean, it's basically the position I've taken. Um, let's let, let's skip the discussion of John Galt. Let, let, let's let's look at the, at the position that I've taken. It's just basically, um, I'm going to refuse to participate in society because you don't want to do anything social. Um, you know, if I woke up tomorrow and society was like, yeah, let's build a better, let's build a better world. You know, let's put property in common. Let's 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 automate production. Let's let, 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 let's do all of these great things. Um, well, aut automate and socialize. We are automating. We're just not socializing. So let's do all these things together. Well, I you know what? I I would love to participate. I would drop everything I'm doing. I'd go run, running towards it. But that's not the world we live in. The world we live in is a world where you know it's like Jay is going, "Hey guys, let's try this," and everybody's like, "Uh." Profit, sex, you know, and 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 so like th these are the things. I mean, this is the reality of it, right? So, um, if you could offer people a way out of participating, um, and get the floors done at the same time, um, it might be a win-win situation. Um, and like I say, I know it comes off as a Bugs Bunny trick, and maybe in some ways it is, but maybe it's actually a, a, a realist approach to answering the question of, you know, who's going to clean the toilets. This is my response to the viral Tammy, sorry, Tommy. I don't know, I don't know what the hell kind of name that is. To, Tommy Lauren uh, versus Charlemagne the God. Um, I moved over to this profile here and eventually deleted um, due to the 
uh, uselessness of the new YouTube comment thing system. So my response is that she's not lying. She's been lied to, and she doesn't have the education to work through it. She doesn't know who Malcolm X or Huey, Lew Huey Newton or Eldridge Cleaver are, and she couldn't tell you Karl Marx from Thomas Jefferson. It's not that she doesn't understand the Black Panthers were more about class than race. It's that she doesn't know a damn thing about the Black Panthers at all. She's just pushing through a scripted presentation of things. She goes back to these talking points and screams them loudly because it's the sum total of what she understands about the situation. It would have been a lot more useful if they had brought out whomever wrote the lines on the teleprompter instead. The lesson is, don't bother going on her show. It's better just to point out that she's a Muppet from a distance, which is what I'm doing right here. Um, you, you're not going to get anything valuable out of this. You're not, you're not really arguing with a person. You're arguing with a, with a caricature of a person. Um, essentially nothing that she says comes from her own mind. She's given a, a, a script with a handful of points. She's instructed to um, push those points using a number of manipulative tools. Um, she's taught how to um, uh, use uh, emotional manipulation to try to um, bring, a, bring a viewer around. It's, it, it, it's, it's absolute propaganda. It makes no pretension to try to get to anything re resembling truth. And it's being pushed with people with ulterior motives from the outside. Um, if you think that you can get through to this person with reasoned arguments, you're wasting your time. The best you can do is make her look like the Muppet that she is. Um, and it's been done enough that it's pretty clear that, you, that, that, like I said, you're not dealing with a real person here. Um, so, you know, it's... Anybody with critical, you know, thinking skills can already see this. Um, there's no point in, you know, pushing the charade any longer. The best way to deal with something like this is to boycott it. Um, just, you know, I mean, it, it helps, you know, you know, to once in a while remind people that, that you're dealing with a propaganda machine rather than a real person. Um, but um, it, it's it's pointless. Um, you're wasting your time. Um, and I put a little link. Um, to, um, it's a Aldrich Cleaver, um, writing, um, about, um, uh, about the Lumpen Proletariat. Um, it's, it's a nice little, um, piece of, uh, it's very concise, um, it, it, so it's useful and kind of as a, as a primer for the Black Panthers. Um, obviously it's something that this woman has not read, um, and most likely does not care to read. Um, I'll put the link up. Um, it's at asadashacker.org, and um, that's the end of this. This is a reaction to the last week tonight with John Oliver video on voting. See, in Canada this would be almost a non-issue, because everybody has a health card, although it was made one. But there's no use in going over that demagoguery, because the bill was demagoguery from the beginning, really. See, the bill is obviously designed to make it harder for poor people to vote. Not black people exactly. This is a class-based policy. It's just that poverty is racialized. So the Canadian conservatives tossed it at their, at their base, despite the fact that everybody in Canada really does have ID, because we all have health cards. And the liberals went after the conservatives for making it harder for people to vote, which is the impression they gave off, because it's what the conservatives were pretending they were doing. The point is that if you just had universal health care already, then this would be a non-issue. See, this is what the banks want. And that's probably exactly what it is. It's bank propaganda. But there's nobody that Cruz is going to swing that isn't going to prefer Trump. Trump is more of an outsider. He's more of a populist. And he's more of a moderate, too. Trump has him completely dominated on every point. The only demographic that Cruz might swing is the super hard evangelical right. And by doing that, he alienates himself. I know, I'm a Canadian. I'm not going to pretend that I understand American conservatism. I don't. It's totally foreign and alien and weird to me. But there's a point where loony is loony, and it's just clear. Cruz is an unelectable candidate. When you line Cruz and Trump up, it's not Cruz that looks better. It's actually Trump that looks better. 
Okay, that Carson Kasich Bush split is going to kill all of them if it doesn't fix itself. Carson was never a serious candidate. That almost comes off as a protest vote. And Bush still somehow seems to be losing the serious votes to Kasich. Again, they need to work something out or they're going to nominate Trump. And if they do that, that probably means electing Hillary. The 25% split is enough to be competitive if it can coalesce, and the confused media narrative has probably resulted in Rubio's vote splitting in half when he pulls out. That's still 30 plus percent on the moderate side, and then Trump collapses, but this collusion needs to hurry up and actually happen. Cruz and, Cruz and Trump are both so bad that that same third could very well abstain, or even vote for Hillary. Black people don't like Jews for the same reason that evangelicals don't like Jews, for the precise reason that blacks are disproportionately religious. That's an established thing, and it has little to do with the political positions on the ground, which is a shame. I mean, he had to be a Jew, right? I know, I'm blaming the wrong side, but still. Latinos are less concerned about this because they're Catholics, and they view Protestants and Jews as roughly interchangeable heretics. Sanders will do better in Latino states than in black states. It's really an outrageous truth, as one, Sanders has an incomparably better record. And two, Sanders' policies will benefit blacks far more than Hillary's. The logical choice for blacks is Sanders, and smart blacks are right to be befuddled by the polling, but there's not any logic in Christian Jew hating. It's ancient, it doesn't go away, and there's little point in wasting resources trying to break through it. The stuff about Clinton being popular amongst blacks due to her record is... Can we get some real scrutiny on this? I mean, what are they referencing exactly? Is it for-profit prisons? Is it three-strike laws? The drug war? Welfare reform? Obama got something absurd like 97% of the black vote. Okay, she can't be too entrenched. I don't think this is a pro-Clinton thing. I think it's an anti-Jew thing. And the media is avoiding it for what it is. Sorry. I'm not posting any more about the U.S. election. I'm talking over my head and trying to apply logic in ways that maybe aren't the best. What I'm saying ought to make sense. Anyways, in the end, it might not. But I'm going to post a quick summary as to what I understand first. First, the banks have abandoned the Democrats. They're keeping Hillary around as a contingency plan, but if they had any intent on really using the Democratic Party as a vehicle, they would have run after her hard and we wouldn't be talking about Bernie Sanders. There may have even been some uns insiders um, quietly hoping for a Sanders nomination, as it might have been thought easier. Second, they had a lot invested in Bush, but he's getting steamrolled by a push of independence, making a run of the party to straight arm Trump through. The biggest tactical error appears to have been Bush's refusal to engage in the media. This is the first major evidence that nobody watches t uh, network television anymore. The banks reacted with Rubio, but he just ended up splitting the moderate vote and further splintering the field. A clash of egos developed over pushing Cruz or Rubio that has yet to be resolved. But it's all based on the flawed premise that Trump was beating Bush on the right. This is actually allowing Trump to control the center as Bush fades into obscurity and the banks attach themselves to the unelectable Right. Logic suggests that if anybody can clean up the center, they should win. And the obvious choice to do that is Bush, but it's not happening. And it seems to be a combination of obviously failed candidates sticking around for far too long, and all thinking they can pull off the same end around uh, with an outdated media attack by the establishment's centrist candidate. As more and more time goes on, it's becoming clearer and clearer that Trump is going to win this. Not by controlling the fringes but by controlling the center. And this is going to hurt turnout for the Republicans in the general. Hillary then becomes the establishment candidate, despite being thrown away for the step of the time leading up to it. 
But if they wait too long to come to her rescue, she could be out of it herself. And then, when you have two candidates running, neither of them representing the establishment, somebody gets assassinated. Logic still says that when the field narrows one last time, Bush ought to get a bump. And that it's a time for a change in the letter. But this combination of Trump screwing everything up and, quite frankly, incompetence in the establishment could very well blow the whole thing open. I think we can probably reduce the whole thing to a big choice. If Bush steps down, what do they do? Do they shower the cash on Cruz and forget about Hillary altogether? Because then Trump wins the nomination, and Sanders gets a fighting chance too. If they cut their losses and go full in on Hillary, then she wins in a landslide. But that's plan F, remember. I'm not sure that Trump even has to win to get assassinated at this point. I think he's caused enough trouble as it is. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, I want to finish a little bit of this up. Um, then maybe even get something to eat, I don't know. But uh, I've just been noticing that um, the stomping upstairs has been getting louder. And, see, I, I, unfortunately I think that I, th I tried to make it very clear to the landlord that my request was not a noise complaint. My request was about the floor, because, you know, when you have obese people stomping on the floor, um, that's bad for the structural integrity of your building. I think that the landlord decided that it would be insensitive to tell his brother and niece that they were both um, dangerously fat and, and might, you know, damage the building um, if they're not more careful about their weight. And so he said, instead said something about a noise complaint. And now because neither of them are very smart, what they're doing is they're stomping on the floor to bother me. Um, and all that's accomplishing is damaging the floor. Um, it's it's really um, quite an unfortunate situation. It's um, it's the guy that actually owns the place that I feel bad for. Um, you know, I mean, he has obviously a burden here. Um, you know, he, he's responsible for it, um, or at least he feels. Resp I I don't know if he's legally or just feels morally responsible for it. Um, but you know, it's obviously some mental retardation in the family. And he's stuck with it, um, you know, and instead of, you know, pointing that out, you know, just really, really fat people shouldn't stop on the floor because you might damage the floor. Um, he presented it as, as like a noise issue. I mean, that, that's what I'm guessing anyways. Um, and like I say, because they don't appear to be too bright, they think that it's... Um, enjoyable to make lots of noise. Um, it, it's really... Um, well, I mean, I, I suppose it's just the reality of it, right? Um, there's no use in um, presenting too many adjectives, such as... such as the reality of things. I just... Um, I wish that the actual owner of the building would have actually um, taken me at face value, because I mean I'm not I'm not going to make a noise complaint. Um, that's not I mean I, I I've never made one before and I wouldn't. Um, I was actually honestly legitimately concerned that you know several people upstairs that are two to three times the size of the average person are jumping on the floor fairly frequently. Um, and being that I live under them, um, I'm a little bit concerned about the structural integrity of the floor because they're exceedingly obese people. Um, and just the honesty in getting that across would have um, no doubt resulted 
in something that's much more useful to everybody than um, a lie designed to protect their feelings um, in a situation where their feelings really weren't the most important thing um, and make it look like I was um, uh, suggesting something that I wasn't. So, um, see, and the thing is that I'm really, like, even now I'm really not annoyed by the noise. I'm concerned about the uh, about the safety of the floor. So, I mean, I, I don't know how long um, the, the, they're going to uh, do that for. Um, I just hope, um, for everybody's sake, that um, they don't that they don't snap any boards um, while they're doing it. I'm not sure I actually got any of the sound though. So let's see if we can get in here. Maybe they heard me. I hope they heard me. Because I mean, it's not the sound of you know. It's not. It's not like a normal, you know, person above you sound. You know, it's the sound of a of not one but two, you know, dangerously obese people, both of whom should be on, you know, medication um, or extreme workout regimens. Um, you know, stomping on the floor and damaging the property um, and it's uh, really unfortunate for the property owner that um, they have to deal with uh, family members that have that, lo that low level of respect for um, you know their, their, their family's property uh, it's the, like I say I feel bad for the guy that owns the place um, it's uh, got to be disappointing. But um, I, I think that uh, they've stopped for a bit anyways. If they come back, I'll see if I can catch it.